So it's getting to the the days are getting shorter, and the the holiday Christmas cactus is in full bloom. And I love this plant because even though the darkest depths of winter, new blooms are coming forth, and it's like the darkest depths of the soul. There's always going to be a new light and new beauty that can bloom forth uh, from it. Okay, now on to the forecast. Hello everyone, this is Vicki Verley and we're here to take a look at the chart uh, for December 17th, 2013, the full moon in Gemini at 25 degrees of and 36 minutes. Uh, you know, I didn't make the, I didn't post a video last week because I made a several videos really beautiful outside with all the fall colors behind me. And unfortunately, um, when I got home, I found out that the wind was, made it inaudible. It was just unsalvageable with the, all the wind noises. So I'm going to have to reshoot those videos, but there, I probably will be getting back to, um, you know, the once a week thing as of next week. But um, anyways, to, to look at this chart, that's what we're here to do today. And here's the uh, the moon point over here, 25 degrees of Gemini, 36 minutes, oppose the sun, which of course is characteristic of a full moon, is the sun and moon opposition. And the sun is at that point, that 25 degrees, 36, almost 26 degrees of Sagittarius, which is the galactic center. So to me that is always this point, I just feel like these lineups with this galactic center, I just feel like these are opening some sort of energy vortex, some sort of portal, bringing in, bringing in illumination, as all full moons do, actually. All full moons uh, bring illumination. But it's going to be coming from a higher level. Now, the moon itself, the, the, the uh, full moon point itself is in Gemini, which is, you know, more on the lower levels. It's the third house in astrology. It rules communication. Um, it's not really rules partnership, that's more sevens, but I think of it as partnerships because the Gemini of the twins and the two together here. Um, it's verbal communication, it's your uh, area you live in, it's um, your neighborhood, your neighbors, your siblings, I believe. I mean, you could look up, there's tons of information out there about third house uh, and Gemini, what it, what it all rules over. So these are going to be the areas, more than likely, that we're going to, you know, on a mundane level, this is where we're going to have, you know, our illumination and everything. Um, also, what I'm feeling about it, because it is verbal and Mercury's talking verbal, I feel like it could be, you know, let's talk it out. You know, and Mercury over here, the planet Mercury, is, you know, five degrees or so off. It's just about to turn to 19 here. It's at 1859. Uh, just about to turn to 19. So so it's in orb with the sun. You know, it's in there. And it's definitely, you know, it's it's in orb with this uh, the full moon here. So it's it's very, you know, Mercury is, is very present. Um, full moon having light. It's also your mind and your mental. You know, your mental capacities and your mind and everything. So even if it's not talking, you know, it could just be um, you rationalizing, you having uh, enlightenment and thinking, having a new look or a new spin on things, you know, oh, I, I get it now. It clicks into place in your head, in your mind, like, oh, I get it, I see now. Or, you know, look for signs and symbols. You know, the, it's like, say this is about a relationship and you have, you're on the outs, for instance, and, or something, or um Maybe you will. Somebody else will say something to you. You know, the messages don't always come from the perpetrators. Uh, perpetrators are a little harsh t <laughs> thing to say, but um, you know what I mean. Like the, the person you're angry with or whatever the case may be. Sometimes you get these other messages. And with third house, it could be right in your own neighborhood. Maybe you'll see a sign or a license plate or one of your neighbors will just say something to you. And it's just like ding 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 you know it's just like a message uh, from beyond in, in the form of just everyday communication also it's texting emailing you know all those sorts of things writing reading reading newspapers or reading you know things online nowadays um, the other big thing that's happening that that day is Uranus is finally going to be going direct where's Uranus yeah as of the time of the uh, full moon 
it's still retrograde. Um, I'm on Eastern Time, so I ran this chart for Eastern Time. Now, the, the full moon is occurring at 4.28 a.m. Eastern, and then uh, Mer or, excuse me, uh, Uranus is stationary direct at 12.39 p.m. So it's roughly, you know, 4.30 to 12.30, that's roughly eight hours later. You know, but it's already, you know, Uranus has slowed to a halt by, you know, even in this chart. It's slowed down, it's stopping, and it's going to start moving back, you know, back forward again. Uh, Mercury, um, excuse me, I keep saying Mercury, because, you know, Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury, by the way. And it does rule your mental capacities, it does rule your higher mind, and does rule enlightenment. It rules electricity, you know, uh, Uranus is, you know, it rules computers, electricity, um, all these sorts of things, the internet, uh, World Wide Web. But what I wanted to say about it, Uranus has been retrograding since July of 2013. So, I mean, although it's it's moved quite a bit, it's moved several degrees since then, it's not going to be out of the shadow till sometime next year. I didn't look it up. Uh, but at any rate, it is going to start moving forward. And so when this happens, sometimes you may be revisited. You may be revisited by issues that were going on in July, or maybe there's going to be some resolution. If something kind of was going, you know, happening around the time of July of 2013, and now uh, maybe it, it can move forward, especially if it does deal with electronics, internet, you know, um, enlightenment, all these, you know, types of things. The 11th house or Aquarius is what we're, we're looking at here. That's what Uranus rules over. So these are the things that would... Uh, be affected by Uranus starting to... Well, it's stationary, um, stationary direct, I forget what you call it. It's pretty much stopped is what it means. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's stopping now. It's like putting it, you're driving along and you put, you've had, it was in reverse, like think of it as a car. You know, it was in reverse and then you're putting on the brakes and you're slowing down to a stop and then you're going to put it back and drive and, and move forward. So we're just at that stop point. We're about to throw it and drive here and drive forward. Um, so, you know, and on a grander scale, you know, enlightenment uh, things, one of the things uh, you, that could definitely happen is, you know, all the troubles with the uh, healthcare website, maybe they'll finally get that all ironed out, you know, because that would definitely rule Uranus. And Uranus also rules um, everybody, the groups of people. You know, it's, it's, it's the one for all and the, you know, everybody. It's, it's not just the individual, it's the... The group, uh, you know, collective con unconscious or collective conscious, whatever you want to call it. So these kind of things are finally going to be moving forward. And it could you know, be in your personal life too, any kind of Uranian type of things that you've been dealing with that have been stalled or delayed or have been trouble moving forward. They could start moving forward. Um, now, um, the other thing, and this was in the last spread too, we've got this grand trine in uh, Earth here. That's the, when I glance, open the chart and use my intuition, this is the very first thing that pops to me. And again, it involves the South Node, it involves Pluto, and it involves Pallas Athena. Now, I've always, you know, I, Pallas Athena is to me always been very Uranian. It, it, I always think of it that way. I think of it as Uranian. Um, forward thinking, everything like that. But if you go back in the mythology, Pallas Athena, she was the warrior. She was the warrior maiden who forged her own path and went her own way. Um, so that's definitely breaking away from the South Node in every way, because the South Node is the past and everything. And it is about, you know, um, you know, having, being bravery. You know, she was a brave warrior. And blazing new trails, you know that's that's definitely the realm of Pallas. Um, and Pluto, there's massive change. You know, as I'm making this, I'm actually making this on November 30th. I'm I'm filming this, uh, you know, a couple weeks ahead of time as always. And uh, what's just happened is uh, that the asteroid Ison uh, came around and passed the sun and and for a day or so it seemed as if um, it had burned up but now as of recording this as of the 30th they're saying that it did survive so I think that's kind of you know what this is about a lot in a lot of ways and the vibe in general is all about here and you know with the sun being at the galactic center and everything it's like um, be brave you know, fly into the sun, you know, uh, 
it, it, you go in the direction of the sun. The sun is your heart chakra. You know, that, that does rule your heart chakra. It rules Leo. It rules the heart in your body. It's your heart chakra. And it is, uh, you know, the sun is the life giver and everything. And it's, uh, it's glory. You know, it's, it's glory. It's, uh, it's the truth. It's the light. Um, and so it's like this, this comet. It, it was this little tiny comet, just like, you know, we think of ourselves as these little tiny in individuals. What could I do? I'm just nobody. I'm just this little tiny individual. Uranus and Aries. Aries is the individual, but Uranus is, you know, the bigger picture. But flies into the sun and does come out, you know, does come out of it, does make it through. Even though everybody's expecting it to fail, even though everybody's expecting it to be destroyed um, and burned up in the in the sun you know in the mag don't fly into the light don't fly too close to the sun or you're going to get burned right and and little ison certainly um didn't as of today it didn't anyway i guess there's a chance it still could disintegrate after so we'll have to see about that but it, it's it's inspirational it's inspirational to people i think it could be uh, you know it's like go ahead Pallas athena you know athena Go ahead and sing your own song. Go ahead and do it. Regardless of what the old paradigm is saying, you know, and trying to hold you back. And, uh, you know, there's gonna, it's going to require a big change, but it just takes this little spark, this little tiny thing to uh, start it all off. Or, you know, I don't know. It's just, it feels like there's a connection somehow. Maybe I'm not really conveying it that clearly, but I, I feel like there is a connection. You know, the other thing that, you know, I talked last time a lot about this Grand Trine on Earth, and you can go back and look at my uh, New Moon video if you want to know more about it. But the other thing that occurred to me about this after making the last video is, you know, Taurus is money. You know, Taurus is definitely money, and the old money system is definitely you know, breaking down to some point. And people are forging new ways of, you know, I've always been a big fan of bartering. You know, I'm a barterer from way back. You know? <laughs> I'm always uh, up for a good barter, you know. Um, and it's like that. And bartering and other, um, what was I just seeing? Um, the mob funding or whatever, you know, that's cool. And donations, like, you know, I always uh, thank you for donations and appreciate donations. I put out these free videos and I receive some donations and it's cool, you know, it's, uh, it all works like that. So it's, it's, we're on the brink of that, like Saturn, all this time that Saturn, I mean, excuse me, I keep saying Saturn, but the, I'm actually talking about the South Node in Taurus. This has been going on for a little while here with the uh, South Node in Taurus, and that is the old paradigm, and it definitely does relate to money. Taurus rules money and possessions. So um, these are some other things that are being changed and being transformed. And it's kind of all sort of pivoting on Pluto. We've got like a, this pyramid going on here too, uh, besides the Grand Trine. You know, um, Pluto, we've got Uranus square Pluto, and that's going to, moving forward now, so it's going to catch it again. We're going to have another, I should have looked it up, but there'll be another Uranus Pluto exact square happening. So Uranus is trying to break free from and break up uh, Pluto's old paradigm kind of energy. And uh, Mars is involved too. And Uranus, okay, Aries is the ruler of Mars, so it's in its opposite sign here. So it's opposing its own thing here. So there's something about this. But, you know, Mars and Libra, you know, Mars is the warrior too, like Pallas. But Mars and Libra is uh, not so aggressive, even though it's opposing Uranus. And, you know, in a, just in a general way, you think, oh, Mars opposed Uranus. Whoa, you know, that could be horrible. That could be, you know, explosive tempers and, you know, and with squaring Pluto and everything, you know, Pluto, Uranus, and the Mars, that's, you know, that's a recipe for um, turmoil or, you know, um, uprising, crazy environments. But Mars with Libra, you know, Libras are not aggressive. Libras will often, you know, they're definitely the compromisers, you know, of the Zodiac. They definitely, for the most part, will look for a compromise and try to make sure everybody's happy. So I like, I kind of like that uh, that part of it. I like the fact that Mars is in, in Libra because maybe this aggression, um, because not Mars isn't just aggression. Mars is, uh, you know, striving, energy. Mars gives energy, lights some fire under some things, gets things moving. So maybe Mars and Libra could light uh, a fire towards some peaceful, peaceful, good energy, stuff like that. Um, 
Excuse me, I had to get a drink of water. Um, the one thing, other thing that's happening here is Jupiter's also still in retrograde, still in orb conjunct uh, our girl Lilith here, squaring Ceres, and it's doing some other stuff here too. Oh, it's trining Saturn. So it's it's the same kind of themes, you know. Saturn is the long term transformation. Saturn is the old school paradigm, it's the status quo. Uh, again, with Lilith, Cancer, Ceres. To me, this is all kind of relating to food, you know. Ceres. Uh, how I Ceres. Uh, if any of you are reading, you know, our tarot readers are familiar with tarot. I really relate Ceres to be the like the Empress in the tarot. So it rules, it's the grain, it's the harvest, it's all these sorts of things. And again, in the sign of Libra, even though we're, we're looking at squares here, Libra wants fair inequality. Libra wants uh, to feed everybody. Uh, Libra wants, <laughs> Libra, this is yeah, food, nurturing, and health care. You know, series in Libra, we want everybody to have health care. I, I, I don't see how that can be wrong. I just don't see how that can be wrong. Uh, I think that that's right. And cancer is definitely nurturing, mothering. Um, so it's squaring, but it's not like it's uh, squaring Aries. Because with a square to Aries, it could be more like, oh, I only care about my opinion and, and nothing else matters. Libra's like, I'm willing to listen to both sides. I'm willing to, the scales of justice, find the balance. Find things that are going to be uh, balanced here. The other thing I wanted to look at here is, is uh, you know, because we're talking Libra, you know, the ruler of Libra is Venus. And this is kind of still an aspect, but it is actually aspecting the um, the, the point here, the, the uh, full moon point. Excuse me, I'm not sure what that's called. It's something. It's an inconjunct or a semi-sextile or something. Uh, but but any rate, you know, if you look here in the aspectarian and stuff, it's saying it's not aspected, but it does just kind of stand out to me. And one of the reasons it stands out to me is because uh, it's at 28 degrees, which is just almost there to that 29, which is that critical degrees. And the critical degrees is just what, just that, you know, it's critical. <laughs> it's like last chance, you know, it's last chance to figure it out, last chance to work it out, um, last chance to try to make it right. Um, and Venus. Now again, this could be in your personal life, relating back to the very beginning of the reading, how Gemini were, you know, we're talking it out with people that um, maybe we don't get along with or something. And this time of year too, but, you know, I get some, a lot of people, clients and stuff, it's just like, oh, I'm going to fight it, you know, fighting with their relatives or these long-standing feuds and I'm going to have to see my cousin and I hate them and blah, 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 on and on. Um, you know, Venus at 29, this is saying, well, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's time to. Let's, and I'll tell you what, you know, from a, a karmic point of view, you don't work it out in this lifetime, it's it's not going to go away. You're not going to, you're not going to escape it, you know, and you, you, these people you're karmically involved in with here, you know, this isn't just going to go away. You know, that's not really... I can't say it's not the way to handle it. It's one way to handle it. <laughs> it might not be the the best way to handle it. But, um, you know, try to work it out. This is also just a couple days shy of the solstice, too. And like I said in the beginning with that plant, you know, it's like it can be the dark night of the soul. And that's kind of like that Venus at 29, 28 Capricorn to me. It's like the dark night of the soul. But yet, you know, the solstice is a new a new beginning. It's a new beginning. I don't know that I'm going to do with the solstice chart. I actually did run it. Uh, but basically, the solstice is, the, you know, the prediction uh, for the, um, you know, for the season. For the fear. It, it's powerful. I find the solstice chart to be very powerful. I find if you run the solstice chart and then put it on a, a bi wheel or around your own chart, it, it can be very insightful and see what's happening here. Uh, the other thing that I was going to mention about Venus before we get off that, the dark night of the soul and everything, it's slowing down and it's going to be turning retrograde on the 22nd, uh, the day after the um, solstice. So again, this is uh, old stuff. 28, 29, this is old stuff. This is stuff you've been working on over many lifetimes. Or this is, if you don't even want to, you don't have to go in the past lives. You can just say, this is like with the holiday family people. That we're going to have this same old argument again? Are we really going to have this same old argument again? 
or are we going to have you know some enlightenment and, and try to look at it another way? Are we going to push each other's buttons and fall right back into that old paradigm and that old pattern? Or are we going to go in, in a new direction? You know, that's that might be the preferable thing. You know, it's we, are we going to have Groundhog Day? That's one of the, we were talking about the bar and my family with the bar and everything. And that's one of the things with the bar. You know, it's Groundhog Day. It totally is Groundhog Day, and people sit in their same seat every day, and they have the same kind. Of, I mean, you they they even say it. Yeah, you know, like, hey, what's up? Oh, same shit, different day. <laughs> Well, why do you want to do that? Why why do you want to keep... I don't want to do that. You know, I want to get in this Uranian energy and this palace energy, and I want to move forward and see see what's next. You know, have a new beginning. Everything is... Um, the, the Chiron is also with the Pluto, too. I, I did talk about that a lot in the last video, but uh, where the heck is that Chiron? Here he is. Nine degrees, you know. The Chiron's involved in all this stuff, too. So, you know, healing... It's a sextile to Pluto. Maybe we could have change with healing. And um, Venus with the 28, that's also your older relatives too. So, you know, and I get, you know, I have older relatives and they send me these crazy emails and I'm just like, I can't believe, you know. And they think it was so much better in the 50s or whatever, you know, that um, Leave it to Beaver era, I get these emails of how it was so great. Well, it really wasn't great if you think about it and these people too it was their life wasn't great it was just some kind of crazy fantasy so but what i want to say back to that with the venus of 28 cap maybe cut these older people a break you know these older people in your family that you may have to spend time with you know they come from a different era maybe they're not going to be able to change you know so just um don't get angry or you know at them maybe try to have a little bit of love and Peace, love, and understanding. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so I guess that's about it. I'm gonna wrap it up. But um, have a great holiday season. Thank you so much for your donations. You know, no donation is too small. You know, if you only have a couple dollars or five dollars, that's okay. You know, that all adds up, and I, I really do appreciate it. Thank you for watching and sharing and commenting. Um, I really, I, I really enjoy reading the comments, and um, uh, I wish you all the best holiday season. Till next time. What is Organite? Originally discovered in the 1930s by Wilhelm Reich, organ energy, or etheric energy, is present in living things including the human body. Reich proposed that illness occurs when our etheric body is out of balance, and that positive organ energy could realign the etheric field thus facilitating healing and balance of one's life force, chi or prana. It has since been scientifically proven that energy called piezoelectricity, meaning electricity resulting from pressure, is created by the compression of certain materials such as quartz crystals, wood, salt, sugar, ceramics, and bones. As the resin cures in an organite piece, it shrinks and compresses the organic matter contained within. The energy emitted creates a positive energy generator. You really can feel the energy coming forth from these pieces. Organite clears the air and neutralizes negative emotions as well as electronic clutter from our high-tech devices. Each organite piece is lovingly hand-created using intuitive pairing of materials to enhance and raise vibration and aid in ascension and a spiritual awakening. I use materials from nature, including the bark from a sacred willow for grounding and gold flakes to emulate the golden light basking down from the higher dimensions. Visit my Etsy shop for a wide selection of handmade organ pieces especially designed for spiritual growth, including heart opening, chakra alignment and activation, and more. Visit www.organenergyflow.etsy.com to see more beautiful organ pieces. And remember, you are love and beauty incarnate.